December 2021. What a month. This month has just been incredible. It's actually just been, I mean, I say this a lot every every month that I, I learned so much and it's an overwhelming experience. And you know, this was actually my best, best month yet. But I think what's really interesting is seeing the progress over the last 12 months and being able to come here and reflect on that and show up each month and, and share that result. If you are new here, each month what I like to do is share my results of selling on eBay for the single month. Um, I do it weekly and I do it monthly. And basically this gives you that perspective of some of the other numbers outside of just what we see on eBay, the business view. Uh, I go through some different versions of the what solds and, and just some of the running numbers and, and things like that. So. Um, yeah, get, get keen for that because there's plenty of opportunity to learn from this video. And of course, if you've got questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. So we're going to jump straight into this. We're going to kick off with some of the numbers, all that jazz. Uh, yeah, let's let's dive into it. The income report for December 2021. Okay, so here we are. This is this is the summary. This is the stats. It's um, incredible month. Lots of green on screen, as you can see. So we've done 238 sales. Uh, basically six more than than last month in November and November was my best month so we have done a bigger and better month once again total cost of items was sitting around $755 average cost per item was around $3 um, 17 and we've come down by about 24 cents total revenue was $7,785 um, which is up by 18% and we've had an average sale price of around 32 dollars and 71 cents which is up by about four dollars and 27 cents which is huge um and then total fees and post at my cost has been around 1763 dollars and 45 cents average being around that 741 which has gone up by about a dollar 49 which makes sense because i've sold more been selling um with a higher asp as well but the big number that i i guess that i'm trying to always increase uh, because you know i want to be able to pay bills i want to be able to invest i want to be able to save and you know live the lifestyle i i have which is total profits and that was five thousand two hundred and sixty six dollars and forty cents which is up by about 18.67 percent uh, margin being 67.7 percent which was an uplift by four guys this this month has just blown me away it's been incredible um a great way to finish the year and a great booster for the new year it also makes me a little nervous because <laughs> Now I want to keep this momentum, but we'll, we'll get to that shortly. So let, let's dive in a little deeper and, and actually have a look at some of the numbers behind this. As you can see, I've got the types of items here, what's been selling, the quantity of those items. You can see averages and things like that. But essentially, video games was what's what's been enabling me to get these numbers. And that's from that video game haul, which is continuing to to show up and, and, and get me some good dollars. Uh, but then DVDs and videos, which, you know, surprisingly, I did 52 of them and they've bought in $823. Now they've taken a little while to do because, you know, they're, they're, light, they're small and you have to package them into the little envelopes. So they're not actually that quick to package, um, but they've done well. Books have actually come in less amount items sold, but they have done a, a, a greater revenue. And then toys being less again and about $500. So they're the four top categories. And I'm going to be doing a video later, breaking down the items that have been selling, the, the, the items that continue to keep selling and things like that. And you can start to see a lot of it here, but I'll be doing it from a year perspective. Um, so it's, it's been great to be able to see what's working, what's not. All right, so the top five items sold. Now, I wanted to change this slightly because a lot of the, the stuff that I've been selling has been the video game haul stuff. But I wanted to also show you the thrifted stuff as well, because... I think a lot of you are still going out thrifting and I, I want to do that too, but I also want to do more of this private collection haul kind of stuff. But as you can see for the video game haul, the top five items out of that was a lot of consoles and some special edition stuff, right? You know, we've got a $500 sale, a 325, a 220, a 250, and a 200. Uh, so lots of profits there. But from a thrifted perspective, I wanted to show you you can still find some pretty big bolo items like we had the canon zoom lens which i got for five dollars and sold for 189. we had the vintage graphic uh graphing calculator which i got for two dollars 27 and sold it for 140. we had the adventure castle kingdom from 1994 i got for 20 and sold it for 150. the video recorder two dollars 27 into 115 and then the uh, lego angry birds from two dollars 79 into 100 bucks so there's stuff out there guys there really is stuff out there. So I just wanted to share that, give that perspective. And of course, if you've got questions around this, more than happy to answer. Now, in terms of some cool items, 
Um, there's been three ones that kind of stuck out to me this month. Look, there's lots of weird and wonderful things that I sell. Um, but one of them was this Anzacs DVD mini series. Um, this one I actually got from a free DVD haul. To be honest, I was going to throw this out. I didn't think anything of it. it. Didn't look like anything exciting. But this is why you always check what you got in your deals. You know, just going on eBay, go doing a quick search or scanning it, and it turns out this item was a bolo item, and I got 94 bucks for it. Uh, Michael Jackson T-shirt. This is it. Thriller. Um, awesome graphic. I've had this one since March. I think it was 2021. Took a while to sit on it. I had it originally at 60 um, and then I got an offer for 45 and I'm like, yeah, what the heck? And I only paid like two bucks for it or something. So pretty happy to be able to get that. And then this other one, surprisingly only took a week to sell, was a hand sculpted ceramic pottery human brown face coffee cup. Uh, this one I got 42 bucks for, but unbranded, you just never know. And when people tell me that they can't sell things, you just need to try new things, explore, experiment and research and you will get some good things out there. Now, in terms of flops, um, didn't really have any flops of items. Um, in terms of when I say flops, I mean, you know, lost money and things. I did have one which had been sitting for a while and I forgot I had the old, my old postage mechanism on it when I changed the price. So usually I used to sell DVDs around 20 bucks with $9 postage, which of course nothing was selling. Then when I got into selling more DVDs, I've changed it to free postage with just sleeves um, and, you know, padded mailers. And then also if they wanted to pay for tracking, they could. However, this was slightly bigger because it was a steel case with a slip of cardboard. It was bigger than what expected. Um, and I had stuffed up my templates. Anyway, I had left something on, which meant I wasn't gonna get as much profit as I normally would. And um, you can see I paid $3.33 for this DVD. So something I wouldn't do again, you live and you learn. Um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I didn't um, make, I mean, I didn't lose a lot of money, but you know, it was a negative of $2. So the wins and lessons for this month at a broader perspective, and a lot of this I've already been discussing about in the weekly videos, but I think the wins and lessons, big one has been, you know, it's been my best month, but the momentum of growth over the last couple of months has just been, just been, just been so encouraging and it, it's really great, but you know, a lot of it comes from hard work and I am doing a lot of hard work, 15 listings every single day, sourcing, connecting, trying to get better at doing things, you know, upgrading my storage, um, getting better systems in place and just always trying to do a little a little better in different areas of the business and I think that's the mind shift shift as well is the mindset shift is trying to continue to do better but also keep the quality and not rush but also how do I bring this into 2022 that's the mindset and it's changed the way I'm thinking of how I want to operate and just been getting this these last couple of months of the results I've been seeing yeah I want to be able to take that and run with it into, into 2022. But at the same time, that comes with some lessons around scaling because scaling is hard. Um, Cause as you get bigger, you, you need to be doing more things, but there's only one of you. Um, so balancing that and doing everything else. And, and I think the other thing is checking myself as well, right? Because not getting ahead of myself, not going on too far, not going in too deep, but continuing to grow at the right momentum. And I want to be very clear that this is not perfect. Like, you know, I show a lot of numbers here and I do try and show the lows and things and it's been some pretty good highs, but you go back four months ago and I was during lockdown and it was tough. I was saying, I, this is a struggle, it's hard. And you know, my systems continue need to be getting better and I'm messy and you would have, it's just, there's a lot going on, right? And I think do not be discouraged by seeing someone else's success or what you think is brilliant because you know, I've built this over the last year and I remember doing $300 in a week and I was overwhelmed by that. And now I'm, you know, on average when I'm doing a mail run, it's 20 packages and that takes, sometimes the packaging items between 20 and 40 items can take two to three hours, just depending on what they are. Getting that down pat and things like this is not perfect. <laughs> um, there's a lot of things I need to be learning and doing better and, you know, they're all lessons to take into the new year. And I actually did a reselling tip video. If you were interested, um, you know, you can go check that out. L link is in the description below. So some quick um, analytics, 463 items listed for this month. Um, we averaged a daily revenue of $251, which is just incredible. And we had an average cycle time of 40 days. So things, last month it was around 30. This month it has gone up, but I've sold some older stock as well, which is great. This is just a monthly flow so you can see how things were happening. We kicked off the month with a with my best day yet. Um, and then we've, we've basically had some pretty roller coaster kind of weeks in December. Um, we even had a zero day. So just goes to show 
things are always going to be different every single day. So here is a year to date view of the running view of, you know, just basically the sales, post cost fees, profits and all that jazz. And as you can see here, it has been a big steady, I guess, uh, well, once again, roller coaster to get to where we are. But, you know, for the whole year, we did 1,712 items, which is basically how many items I have listed now. Um, and we've come in with a revenue of $51,425 and profited $29,486. This is from January 11th all the way up until uh, December 31st 2021 so lots of lots of numbers here if you've got questions more than happy to answer and this is a, a visual view of that so you can see we've we've really climbed and then we have finally hit a peak and then we dipped and then we hit another couple of peaks so it's been some crazy crazy um yeah just crazy journey but if you look at september october that's when we dropped down during lockdown and then before that we had our best month and prior to that is when i was still learning um but it's been a journey to get here it's been it's been great and you've come along for the journey, so thank you. All right, the next up, and I just want to be very clear that this is this is not advice. You know, I'm no accountant or anything like that. This is just what I'm doing to operate and manage my business from an accounting view, from a business view. And I think this is very important to understand that you know, behind the eBay view, if you are operating at scale, um, even if you're not, there's going to be a level of cost that comes through. You know, postage supplies, storage supplies, stationery, and just operating as a business. Now. I follow the profit first um, guide in meaning when I get paid out by eBay, I like to, you know, separate that income into OPEX, operating expenses, into profits, which is a quarterly dividend, owner's pay, and then um, tax as well. And this is just an example view from the profit first of what I've used for um, basically all the way up until December from FY22 perspective. So from July all the way to December. Um, but as you can see here, you know, I've got sales, revenue, profit, fees, postage paid, new stock, new stock dollars, sold cost of goods and other expenses plus margin. Now this margin isn't just from sales and the profit from those sales. It's actually the sales plus all the expenses and then it's the profit. So as you can see, we've, we have gone through a challenging series of months. We've had a 40% margin and 27 and 35. We had one, one month where we made no money and that's because we spent more. Then the following months, we've done a 46 and a 43%. So, and we've been able to raise our revenue and raise that profit number into my pocket. So um, if you have questions about this, please, please do ask. Um, I do encourage you to go check out the Profit First book. Um, and there's a lot to learn there. Even just the way of just managing your money just helps you keep the cash flow of your business on the up and up and making sure that you're not going in too strong. So that would be my big, big recommendation going in 2022 as well. So that's it team, that is December 2021. Um, it's been crazy journey, crazy journey. And you've seen basically the progress to date. Um, next week for my week 52 video, I will be doing a bit of a, a refresh of the entire year and I'll continue to do that um, as we progress on a monthly basis. Just, you know, checking in of how we're progressing from an FY22 perspective. And of course, we'll be going into January 2022 as well. Uh, so. I'm excited to be able to see what we can do in the new year. I've got some goals that I'm almost put down on paper and I'll be sharing them with you soon. Um, just trying to do things differently, better, and to continue to raise the bar and, and push myself. So I'm excited. You should get excited. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful and grateful. Um, questions, comments, let me know below. Otherwise, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, do the whole shebang, and hustle. Ciao.